The flu can be serious for everyone, but for older adults, the risk of flu-related complications, such as pneumonia or an increased risk of having a heart attack or stroke, can be particularly high. Hello everyone, I'm Cheryl Musial and welcome to My Care Advisors. In this episode, Staying Healthy This Flu Season, we are joined by registered nurse and nationally recognized infection prevention and control professional, Sue LaGrange. Well, welcome, Sue. It's so wonderful to speak with you today. Thank you, Cheryl. I am so happy to be here. Well, you know, it's that time of year. Cold and flu season is on the rise. So let's start by discussing some differences between influenza and other illnesses such as COVID-19 and or a cold or stomach bug. That's a really good question, Cheryl, because unfortunately, several of these illnesses share some of the same symptoms. So let's start out with the difference between the flu and a cold. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have some really good resources that really do address some of those things, where a common cold is probably just as contagious as the influenza, and they're both respiratory in nature. So that's important to remember. However, colds are typically not as severe, and the symptoms come up just gradually and rarely do you have significant fever or chills. You may have a slight fever, but you'll have more of a stuffy nose and sometimes a sore throat, where if you have the true influenza, which is also a very contagious respiratory virus versus a stomach bug, and I'm going to talk about a stomach bug in a minute, the symptoms of influenza um, really are you're going to have that fever and you're going to feel not so good. You might even have some chills. Uh, you may have those muscle and body aches with a sore throat and a cough. You, you still might have a runny nose um, or a stuffy nose as you do with a cold, but you're going to have that fatigue. You're going to feel really tired at times. And some people, and typically it's children, may have some diarrhea and vomiting, but most of the time, the symptoms are more respiratory in nature. Now with COVID-19, as we all know, um, you can possibly have many of the same symptoms as both a cold and influenza. And you can add to COVID where you have that shortness of breath and a loss of taste and smell. And the only way you can tell the difference basically is testing. So let's talk for a minute about the stomach bug or a stomach flu, which is also called gastroenteritis. This is where you typically will see that vomiting, diarrhea, and that stomach cramping. And sometimes you may even have a low-grade fever. However, this is not what the seasonal influenza is. Now, there are people that say, I have the stomach flu, but it's not the seasonal influenza, which is respiratory in nature. Oh, that's fantastic information to know. And I understand, Sue, that the flu season has already begun. And are there certain areas of the U.S. that are already starting to see a rise in cases? Yes, absolutely. In Texas, the District of Columbia are seeing some high activity levels. New Mexico, Virginia, and Georgia are seeing some moderate levels. Um, and additional states are already now starting to see some low to minimal activity. And as we move forward now throughout the season, of course, that will change on a rapid basis. Yeah, that makes total sense. And also, Sue, I understand there's some debate about the best time to get that flu vaccine, especially for older adults. So when do you think it's really a good time to get that vaccine and to make sure that we're prepared? Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention do recommend that people that are 65 years of age and older should get their flu shots in September and October, ideally by the end of October. So right now is a perfect time to get that flu vaccine. Keep in mind, if for some reason you do not get that flu shot in October, you can still receive that vaccine after October because it will still provide you with protection during the season. And once in a while, there are some late outbreaks after January. So it is important to receive that flu vaccine. Yeah, I hear hear my friends sometimes saying, well, I get the flu vaccine, but I, I've got it before. So do they really need to get the flu vaccine every year? You know, Cheryl, that is an excellent question. Um, and yes, they do for several reasons, because every year the researchers will determine what they believe 
will be the viruses that are going to be circulating for and what they expect to be most common in the upcoming influenza season. So the vaccine composition actually changes. And another reason why why it's a good idea is because your immunity will decline over time. So last year's vaccine won't offer you as good of protection for this upcoming uh, season. Oh, that makes total sense, Sue. So I was wondering, can people still get the flu even if they've been vaccinated? Yes, they can. But it's very similar to COVID, where when you receive the vaccine, you can still actually get the virus. However, it can reduce how severe the flu can affect you. So when you look at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they clearly outline benefits from the flu shot, such as it can prevent you from getting the flu, or if you do get the flu, it can help you prevent how sick that you become and just as important, it can even possibly prevent hospitalization. Oh, that's so important to know, especially for older adults who may be at a higher risk, correct? Absolutely. They are at a higher risk of significant disease when, and also how the influenza virus will affect them. So receiving that vaccine will possibly even reduce those effects. Yeah. So can one receive the COVID-19 vaccine or booster at the same time when they get their flu vaccine? Yes, they can. Um, they can receive both at the same time if they're both eligible and the t- for both vaccines. And then the timing has to coincide. So it is recommended to discuss that with your physician if you are concerned about getting those together However, yes, they can be administered at the same time. That's really good information to know. And so I'd like to switch now to some personal strategies to stay healthy this fall and winter, especially for older adults and their caregivers to stay healthy. Well, for older adults, as well as their caregivers, which is also very important, I agree with you, is staying as healthy as we possibly can. And that includes making sure we're eating right, that we're exercising to our ability to make sure that we keep those joints, muscles, our heart and our lungs working well. Also to make sure we're getting adequate fluids and water is a great fluid to make sure that we're staying hydrated. Getting enough sleep is also so important because it makes us feel fresh and it keeps us healthy. And then of course, stress management is so important because when we're under a lot of stress, our body doesn't function as efficiently as it could. So it's important to also look at some good stress reduction exercises and management as well. And then I always recommend, as we talked about earlier, is to stay up to date with all recommended vaccines, um, our influenza, our COVID vaccines and boosters, but also pneumonia vaccines, shingles vaccine. It's really talking with our physician to make sure that we are up to date with those. And then practicing good hand hygiene, which means good hand washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or using hand sanitizer. Also, if your hands are not clean, be sure not to touch your face. It's very important. So if you're in an area where you are touching other things and you can't get to that hand sanitizer or to wash them, you know, really try hard not to touch your face, your eyes, your mouth or your nose. Also, it's important to stay away from people who are coughing, sneezing, or even if they just look sick. Many of you are probably aware that there are symptoms of the cold, flu, and COVID that are very similar. We talked about that a little earlier, but many people who think that they just have a cold or allergies have ended up testing positive for COVID, and that even has happened in the past years with influenza. So again, since we are moving into the flu season, it's just best to stay home if you are sick and to stay away from people who are as well. And then lastly, um, if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask in large crowds, or if you have a weakened immune system, or if you just feel that it's the best thing for you personally, 
it's perfectly acceptable to wear a mask. I see people wearing masks all the time. So again, that is a personal decision. Oh, thank you, Sue, for sharing this information. I love those personal strategies to stay healthy. Thank you. So I was wondering, what are a few questions that older adults and their caregivers should ask their physician or their healthcare provider regarding not only vaccines, but also other specific health conditions that they should be concerned about as we enter into this flu and cold season? Well, the first thing is I hear a lot of of people talk about having side effects from previous vaccines. And so if you have had some side effects from previous vaccines, it's a great thing to discuss with your physician because many of those side effects are mild and would still not be something that would prevent you from receiving a vaccine in many cases. But be sure to talk with your physician about that. There are also some people who are worried about the safety of vaccines. And so this is also something that your physician can talk to you about. Another area is if you do get COVID, be sure to call your doctor right away and ask about treatment because there are treatments that are available that may help lessen the severity. And so your physician will be able to tell you if you would be a candidate to take those treatments. And in addition, the same is for influenza because there are also antiviral drugs that can be taken for influenza for both exposure, um, as well as for someone who develops symptoms of influenza. Therefore, discussing these with your physician can be very helpful. So Sue, can you share a few more resources that can support their caregivers and older adults as they navigate this flu season? Absolutely. I had mentioned several times today about the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention they really do provide on their website so many really good links for information, such as information on all vaccines, on hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer. They also provide information on influenza, and that includes what influenza is, the signs and symptoms, even talks about antiviral medication, You can also find information about COVID-19. Another area is your physician's office. If you go to visit your physician and they have pamphlets and flyers available, you may want to grab a few of those and take a look at the information that they are providing you with. Your local public health department can also answer questions, provide you with resources and answers, and they provide many times vaccines as well. And there's also a link to an article on natural aging on the power of laughter that outlines really just how good laughter can be for you, for your whole body. So again, it's important to really look at what available resources that we have. Um, Some of the senior community organizations have some resources for health as well. Well, thank you, Sue, for joining us today and sharing this important information especially how to stay healthy this upcoming flu and cold season and sharing those great resources, especially the laughter. I love that. That's a great way to end this uh, podcast session. Thank you, Sue. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to share this information with you and your listeners. Thank you again, Sue, for sharing these tips to stay healthy this flu season. Listeners, to view resources, show notes, and access more My Care Advisors episodes, visit mycareadvisors.com. You can also subscribe and listen to our podcast on your favorite app. I leave you with this thought, being strong, being positive, and being healthy starts with me. Choose to be inspired to live the best life every day. Thank you for listening. We are grateful to be your guide.